Here's part two of my video looking at ways the Wallabies might be able to attack the All Blacks defence. For me, one of the keys that the Wallabies need to use against the All Blacks is quick ball. You can see here in 2011 in the Tri-Nations final that with quick ball and players have realigned, Guinea is able to find options, move the ball quickly, and that places pressure on the All Blacks outside defence. And here from their game against the All Blacks in Hong Kong in 2010, the Wallabies have got numbers to the breakdown, they're generating quick ball, and Genny has got options when he looks up. As a result, they're able to move the All Blacks from side to side and probe the defence looking for an opportunity. They can afford to be patient because they've got numbers to the breakdown and multiple ball carriers in support, therefore they're fairly confident that they can recycle the ball. Even when things don't go as well as they'd planned, they're able to recycle the ball because they've got numbers in and around the ball, as well as realigning quickly to give Guinea options. Having those multiple ball carrier options that the playmaker can choose from puts the defence in two minds. Here you can see the All Blacks have got to deal with four and possibly five ball carrying options. With the All Blacks focusing on which player to take, Cooper's able to get outside them with a wide pass and good support from Drew Mitchell. By the way, there's another of those first phase tries that I talked about in the previous video. In their most recent game against the All Blacks, the Wallabies were using a simple loop play with Beal passing to McCabe and then either receiving the ball back, the second option being McCabe take it to the line himself, and the third option being McCabe take it to the line, but then pass back to Nick Cummins. They may well have been trying to target the channel between Nono and Carter, but it was so basic that it really didn't put any pressure on the All Blacks' defence. Where the Wallabies and other teams have had some success against the All Blacks is playing in the wide channels using a wide pass. Here it's an example with Cooper out to Gitto in Hong Kong in 2010. Here it takes only three passes for the ball to be moved across the field. Genia to Cooper, Cooper to Mitchell, and then across to Adam Ashley Cooper, and they've gone from one side of the field to the other. That starts to place pressure on the All Blacks' defence. Again here, whilst it's not long passes, a series of short passes, the ball is moved into the wide channels, and the Wallabies get over the gain line. Once the All Blacks start concerning themselves with the wide channels, that opens up holes inside, and Barnes takes advantage of it here. And here's an example from the recent England game. The long pass opens up the opportunity to target the wide channel. Of course, you'd need a fly half with the pass to take advantage of those opportunities. But that's a subject I'll tackle next week in my next video.